Hey, y'all. Do you want to know all about bagels? Do you want to know how to make your own homemade bagels? Okay, let's be honest. Do you not want to learn how to make your own homemade bagels, but you want to learn how to make all those delicious feel, fillings, the, the schmears, the fish? Well, I bet you do. Who doesn't love a really good bagel with some delicious cream cheese and smoked salmon? Oh, yum. It makes me hungry thinking about it. So I am super excited. My name is Virginia Willis, and I am the host of Cookbooks with Virginia. It airs nearly every Friday at 1130 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And each week, I get to talk to different cookbook authors. And this week, I'm thrilled to pieces because I am talking with Kathy Barrow, the author of Bagels, Schmears, and a Nice Piece of Fish. And huge respect for Kathy. She's an awesome cookbook writer and just great recipes. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So let's bring her on. Y'all can learn something and we can ask her questions too. Good morning, Virginia. How nice hey. to see you. It's good to see you too. How are you doing today? I'm great. It's sunny and beautiful and spring is on its way. I know, <laughs> right? I think that yeah. we will get a little bit more, uh, it's pinch more cold weather down south, but I, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Well, I am so thrilled to have you on the show, Kathy. And we've known each other a long time, but I a want you to please share a little bit of your story with the folks that may not be familiar with you or, or don't know you as well. Okay. Um, Virginia, I call myself a serial careerist because I've done a few things in my life. I started my life in retail. I actually had a fish market for a year and then it, you know, flamed out. But I did own a fish market called Porgy and Bass back in the 80s in Pittsburgh. Isn't that a great name? <laughs> and then um, from there, I became a marketing person and I did marketing for nonprofits and not for profits. And I had a consulting firm and I did a lot of stuff for about 15 years. And then I met my husband who said, gee, you seem really to hate what you're doing. And I hated what I was doing so much. Oh. And he said, what would you do if you could do anything? And I told him I would be a landscape designer. So I went to graduate school. I became a landscape designer. And then that failed. I mean, entrepreneurship is about failure and learning, I guess, right? I'm growing. And at uh, 50, the ripe old age of 50, I started writing a blog. And from there, the New York Times asked me to contribute some preserving recipes. And then the Post um, asked me to start a column, Washington Post. And I've written for most of the magazines. This is my fourth book. The first was Preserving, Mrs. Wheelbarrow's Practical Pantry. And then two books on pie, Pie Squared and When Pies Fly. And now Bagel Schmears and a Nice Piece of Fish. And that's my story. That is so nice. Oh, I just love your books. And I loved Pie Squared. That was such a great book. You, Thank you. So I think the reason I love your recipes, and I know the reason why the recipes resonate so much with readers, is that they're, it's clear, it's concise. It's, uh, you know, I mean, that's the best part of a good recipe. You know what I mean? Like, I love a story in the head note. I love feeling like someone is there in the sort of kitchen with me. But, you know, there's a, there's a nice balance. And I, I, I really do feel like your recipes are that way. I'm very proud of how well tested my recipes are. I'm, I'm just think that there could be nothing worse as a recipe writer than to have somebody say that didn't work for me. I mean, it really for, it just breaks my heart. It's, so, it's like, a, it, I know, isn't it? Like, I always feel it's so funny because when that's happened to me, I feel like that they are confessing their purported failure. And I am like, I am taking it in. Like, my failure. Like I didn't do something right by telling them wrong. Right. So uh, that's why I test everything three, four, five times before it even goes to a professional tester or a group mm -hmm. of amateur testers right. to make sure that everybody's going to have the same experience. I just love that idea. So let me take a minute. So y'all, Kathy is the author of Bagel Schmears and a Nice Piece of Fish. And you can win a free copy. So if you go to Instagram, you're going to see all the instructions. But if you go to my Instagram feed, which is at Virginia Willis, you'll see uh, the, the cover of the book and you'll see some instructions and you're going to follow, follow me, follow Kathy and enter to win a free copy from Chronicle Books and Kathy. And so, so this is, this is, I think this is a great, um, 
opportunity. Let me show you some of the, let me, let's talk about some of the photographs while Aren't you they talk beautiful? about testing. It's gorgeous. Yes. I, I think the hungry. photos That's are amazing. So this is the first time that I was not on set for the photography for this book because it was during COVID. The COVID time. And so it was really quite an experience. Linda Zhao and uh, Barrett Washburn and Maeve Sheridan were all in the studio and they had a camera set up and they would place everything under the camera and I'd look at it on Zoom and go yay or nay or add this or what about. But the funniest part is that in order to make budget, I had to make all the bagels ahead of time. So I made a couple hundred bagels, froze them at all of my friends here in Frederick. I was like dropping bagels off to hold in their freezer. And then in one day I put them all in huge styrofoam boxes and FedEx them to Brooklyn, which may be the greatest Coles to Newcastle story ever, right? That is, a, <laughs> that is hilarious. You FedExed. You to fed Brooklyn. It. Failed. <laughs> I did. Well, I would dare say, and I'm just going to, um, how do I put this being as, as nice as I can be? Um, I, I, even though Brooklyn has such a reputation for bagels, I would, I would dare say that I've had bagels in Brooklyn lately <laughs> and I bet yours were better than many of the bagels that I've had in Brooklyn, right? There are a few things that are away. Some specific of those about mine. That's so awesome. So all of these, okay, y'all. So Hatch chili bagel. So this is this isn't just an everything bagel. Hatch chili bagel, Asiago and pepperoni bagel, honey whole wheat and oat bagel. Like you can feel it. A gluten free bagel. What? Absolutely. That we worked so hard to make an actually crispy, chewy everything that you love in a bagel. Gluten free bagel. It that is, is so fantastic. Wonderful. It's like the bread of your people. It's the bread, like biscuits are the bread of my people. It's like, I, I would right. never want to share a recipe for a gluten-free biscuit. There wasn't everything that a biscuit should be. And I can imagine that's right. that's how you felt about a bagel. But you don't want it to be a compromise. You know, if they're going to, if, if a gluten-free eater wants a bagel, you want it to be the best bagel that they could have. Exactly, exactly. And I have to tell you, though, I know this is bagel smear and a nice piece of fish, but this is perhaps one of my favorite things on the planet. Uh, Bialis. Mm -hmm. I, love, I love a Bialy. And do you know what a pletzel is? No, let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the lovely oniony filling that's inside of Bialy. Right. Well, there's a, a, a thing called a pletzel, like pretzel, but with an L. Uh -huh. And it's kind of a Jewish focaccia with all that yummy onion stuff on top. So okay. it's a soft bread, lots of oil. You just punch it with your fingers, just like focaccia. And uh, at traditional bagel brunches, it's also, it's often called a uh, breadboard or something like that. So wow. they're delicious. How wonderful. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. So y'all, oh, look, Cynthia's here. Hey, Kathy. Hi, love Cynthia. That. Yay. That's awesome. Okay, Cynthia, now that you're here, I have to tell you, it's so funny. Um, Mama last week, who's not here, it makes me wonder, um, made a joke that I wasn't wearing red lipstick, but I knew that Kathy would have on red lipstick, so I have on red lipstick <laughs> today. All right, let's me talk too. a little bit, because we, um, I would love for you to go over, because people think, oh my God, bread, am I going to, bread is bad enough, but then bagel is a whole other thing, because they, you know, confusion about how to make them. And you tell me right before we were going on, it's only five ingredients. And that That's is right. so simple. So let's talk about the ingredients a little bit. All right. I'm going to grab the them as I go. Okay. This is the primary ingredient in a bagel. This is what makes bagels different. That's okay. high gluten flour. It's got a 14.2% protein content. And that's what makes that exterior shell, the shininess, the chewiness, it's that extra protein. Now I get this from King Arthur mail order, but mm -hmm. if you don't want to do that, there's a very simple solution. This is called vital wheat gluten. Mm -hmm. You can get it from Bob's. You can get it. This is from Hodgson mill. Sometimes it's called vital wheat gluten flour, two teaspoons in a cup of all purpose flour boosts your protein so that you've made your own high gluten flour. 
So you don't need to commit. Mm -hmm. You can just give it a shot. And this is cheap. If you're, if you're scared of commitment to flour. That's yeah, right. I'm about right there right now. Okay. So. The next thing is this kind of yeast, SAF okay. instant. Now, th this is not rapid rise. This right. is different. It's instant yeast. And the beauty of it is that you don't need to bloom it in warm water and look for those bubbles, which okay. is always confusing. This just stirs right into your dry ingredients. So that would you, that's what you... SAF is instant, instant yeast. You instant. can use the regular Fleischmann's active dry yeast. That's It'll right, work yeah. also, but I always like to bloom that in the liquid before you do that. So now how do you feel about the uh, active dry yeast? The ones I, that I, you can, uh, Fleischmann no, makes two. So Fleischmann makes one that you can put in liquid and bloom. And then they have another one that I'm always so dubious about that you can yeah put into flour, but you prefer the SAF. I do prefer the SAF. And if you can't find that, then use the active dry. Okay, cool. Awesome. Thank, right. I, honey, I'm not just asking questions now. I am taking, right. I am taking, taking notes, notes from master. Cause if I'm going to sit here, yeah, this is, this is why I do cookbooks with Virginia because I get to learn from the best. And so that's awesome. So, okay, let's continue teacher. Um, item number three, kosher salt. I use diamond crystal. If you use Morton kosher salt at home, you need to use about half as much or your bagel will be too salty. You can substitute fine sea salt for the diamond crystal at an mm -hmm. even amount, but you should not use iodized salt. Agreed. Now let's talk a little bit about that so that people don't know. Y'all, the reason that Morton's and Diamond brand, it's, they're two different sizes of crystals. And so there's more space between crystals. And so you need right. half as much Morton's because the size of the salt is a different shape. So it and may if you weigh it, you'll learn it. I mean, right. you can see it in weight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that that's it. So a, a teaspoon of salt is not a teaspoon of salt. It depends on the salt because of the space between the grains. So just right. know that. Thanks for thanks for pointing that out, Kathy. That's really if there great. are only five ingredients, you want to make sure that they're all correct. Preach. Right? That is that. I think <laughs> that is like the most. I don't know. <laughs> that is like the most, one of the, the most important things. Like I think that, you know, everyone wants, you know, whatever, five ingredients in 30 minutes. That's fine. Stuff like that can be done. But the, in my mind, just what you said, the, the small, the smaller, the number of ingredients, the better that your ingredients have to be. And mm -hmm. the more attention, it's more attention to detail, right? Correct. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. So right. diamond so first kosher. There's the fourth item is a sweetener. Bagels always have a little bit of sweetness. And the traditional sweetener is this, barley malt syrup. Okay. Now, oddly, barley malt syrup has become slightly harder to find during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. You can find it online, but it has something to do with beer production mm. and, and the way that they're finishing barley and the malt extract. <laughs> anyway, you can get it online. If you can't find it, you can use non-diastatic malt powder. Holy crap. I've never even heard of that, Kathy. It's the non -diastatic same. Non-diastatic malt barley malt powder. powder. It's available from King Arthur, and it gives you the same flavor. You use the same quantity as the barley malt syrup. Now, I want to warn everybody, if you've never dealt with barley malt syrup, it's infuriating. It's the stickiest, most difficult product I have ever had to live with. How, um, how it was it so bad? I can't tell you. It's like treacle. It's that consistency, but uh -huh. 10 times stickier. It is so sticky. And if you make the mistake of pouring it into <laughs> your mixer while it's going, flips around in these long strands of sticky seriously bad bad but if you keep it cold you can pour it out of the jar and weigh it into your bowl and it goes so slowly you can use scissors to cut it this is my tip what yep and if you hate the whole business and you don't want to order anything special substitute honey or maple syrup but know that you won't have that classic malty you know, uh, flavor. Okay. Oh my and gosh. The awesome. Fifth ingredient is yes. water. 
water. It is not New York City water. It's just water. Now, if your water, like I have a friend who's got a well and their water has a highly metallic um, flavor. So uh-huh. she doesn't use that water. She'll use bottled water because uh-huh. that, again, five ingredients, that metallic taste can transfer into your bread. Wow, so. that is so awesome. That is so awesome. Okay, so have, five did you come to these five ingredients? You came to these five ingredients before, during or after you wrote the book? These are classic ingredients for okay. a bagel. If I mean, there have been a lot of bad bagel recipes written in the last 50 years where people were trying to achieve the bagel crispness yeah. without the addition of that high gluten flour, which was only available commercially for such a long right, time. Right, 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 and right. And so you'll read them and they have eggs in them and they have baking powder in them. That is not a classic bagel. A classic bagel is just those five ingredients. All right. So now I have a question um, that I think that some folks may be curious about. So we, I know that bread flour, for example, is a, is a higher in gluten than all purpose flour. What higher in is protein. High protein. Sorry. So let's talk a little bit about bread flour versus high gluten flour. Um, bread flour, I think weighs in at 13.4 or something like that. So it's just, mm-hmm. it's just more, there's more protein in that, um, high gluten flour. You can make bagels with bread flour, but they won't achieve that same exterior crispness. All right. So high gluten flour is, is at the, the very top end of the scale in terms of That's gluten. correct. Mm-hmm. We're like mm-hmm. cake flour and pastry flour and Oh, yeah, it's way down there. Way down. Mm-hmm. So y'all, for those of you, we're starting to talk kind of geeky. So uh, all flour has protein that when combined with water and motion will form gluten. And at the very low end of the gluten scale is something like cake and pastry flours that are light and delicate. And you got all purpose in the middle. And then you go up a little bit in bread. And then what Kathy is saying is that bread flour is is what would typically be considered at the top of the gluten scale, but then high gluten flour is even above that. And that's what gives it that nice. I just love the toothsomeness of bagels, right? Exactly. I think I've got, I've got a bagel right here. Just so happens. I bet. Could you hear it? Oh my God. I didn't hear it, but my mouth, because my mouth was watering. How beautiful that is. That's so nice. It smells really good. All right. So let's talk about, okay. So you, I love that you just also said that all of your recipes are multiple tested before you turn it to a professional tester and amateur testers. I'm a huge believer in that. Um, I, I, I follow the same thing. Like if my name's on it, I want, I want to know it works and I just stress it someone else, which is why your, which is why your recipes are so well respected. Let's talk about the book. So y'all once again, Um, go to my Instagram feed. You're going to look for the cover of the book and you're going to follow me and you're going to follow Kathy. And, um, and let's talk about, let's do some, let's do some cooking. What you got? I have a block of your favorite Philly cream cheese right in here. Now you can make your own cream cheese, but, um, or you could just use Philly. But the thing about Philly is it doesn't really spread. You know how whipped cream cheese gives you that nice, easy spreadability. Well, that's what I call a schmear, but I don't like the whipped cream cheese because it has gums and stabilizers. So I make my own. This is sour cream. I'm going to throw two tablespoons of sour cream in with that eight ounce block of cream cheese and uh, just a tad of lemon juice. I've got half a teaspoon. And then I'm going to smush that around until we get a really nice consistency. So that's your basic, what I call the master schmear recipe. That's and- so nice too. Cause um, I think the thing is like for me, honestly, like I do like the consistency of the whipped cream cheese, but I don't, I don't keep that many different products. Right. I try to keep right. my, you know, I, I may have cream cheese, but I'm not going to have cream cheese for baking and then cream cheese for, you know, two different kinds of cream cheese. So this exactly. is wonderful. So now this is nice and you can see that it's easier to move mm-hmm. than yeah. another. And this is the base. And in the book are almost two dozen different versions of schmear. So we've got this, I'm going to make a lox schmear with some leftover chopped Nova lox. 
about a half right. a cup. Two tablespoons of chives. Some lemon zest, I think half a teaspoon. Um, a teaspoon of lemon juice and cracked black pepper. Oh my, I'm serious on that. I'm starving now. So what I love about this is sometimes I just have a tiny bit of lox left over, like uh -huh. not even enough for one bagel, but I can just add these ingredients to a little bit of sour cream. I mean, cream cheese. And there I have this beautiful spreadable lox. Oh, uh, that's so nice. Now how, and how long will that keep? Like if I make that, a say week. I'm having a front. Hmm? A week. A week. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like to serve it at room temperature. Uh, mm -hmm. Look at how, can you see how pretty it is? Oh uh, yeah. It's got some nice well, pinkness. Uh, yeah. yeah. And a little bit of green from the chives. Oh, that's so wonderful. Okay. So we have a question. So um, this is Great. from uh, Jennifer and she said that she saw, went to one of your classes at Central Market in San Antonio. And her oh, question is, um, if you're new to making bagels, what's a good starter recipe to try from the new cookbook? Thank you so much, Jennifer, for asking, and thank you for watching today. Thanks, Jennifer. I have to say that I always think you should make a recipe that sounds delicious to you. Um, now, you could make the New York recipe, New York bagel recipe because it makes six bagels, and you could make two sesame, two poppy, one plain, six everything, whatever sounds good to you. I'm going to show you what I did this morning. I made two dozen bagels this morning. I have this fantastic bagel board. Look at, Look this. at this that. Is, this is mid-century. It was a, a Hanukkah present from our mutual friend, Bonnie Benrick. There's um, a dish just for the lox, a dish for cheese, and then oh these like toast. God. Isn't that adorable? So on I'm here, I got, you know, your sesame bagel and a poppy bagel. I made some pumpernickel, so I made marble. They're half oh, New York plain and half God. pumpernickel. This is so making me want some good old G food. I love it. That's right. Awesome. <laughs> and then nothing like, I love this everything bagel. Doesn't uh, it yeah. just perfect? And now, that, so, Kathy, these are all, these are all these. New York style, right? These are all the New York style bagels. Yes, these are all New York style. Now, a Montreal bagel is very easy to make. And you, saw, you saw that one coming. So, tell I me. Did. So, y'all, most people, most of the bagels that we get, even good or bad or inferior versions or a version of, of New, York, New York style bagels. But to the north, we have Montreal bagels. And, Kathy, yes, please tell us a little bit about that. Well, I had to learn about Montreal bagels. I'd only uh -huh. had them twice in my life. Once in 1967, when I went with my family to the expo. Yes, that was like many decades ago. And then about 20 years ago when Dennis and I went to Montreal. So I was like, okay, I have to make a Montreal bagel. I ordered six dozen bagels from saint Viateur, and they arrived and I worked my way, you know, testing, tasting, how do they freeze? How do they toast? But Here's the thing about Montreal bagels. They're a little um, homely. They're kind of lumpy compared to the New York bagel yeah. that's all plump. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're flatter. They're, they're flatter. They're chewier. They're sweeter. They don't have as many holes in them when you cut them open. They're denser. They're calm. Yeah, uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, yeah, but they're delicious. They're they really delicious. delicious. They yeah, also have seeds, like seeds on top and bottom. That's so another... Yeah seeds on top and bottom That's ah, a classic. now i honestly i don't remember i don't remember that like that didn't register with yeah. me but i didn't eat six dozen bagels <laughs> <laughs> okay so we have another question too okay well here we go we have a friend uh she went to this 67 expo also wow y'all that's crazy man all right so <laughs> Teresa has a question um uh what is the difference between a bagel and a bali i love both um, thank you for your question, Teresa, and thanks for watching. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn it to to Madam Expert. <laughs> a bialy is not worked in the same way. It doesn't get that exterior shell. Some of the way that shell is developed, because when you make the dough, you roll it into a rope or you poke up your thumb through to get your hole, and then roll the bagel on a work surface so that you tighten up that exterior, and that's what makes it tight like that. A bialy is flat. 
It's got more flower on the outside. It's You don't work that exterior for a shiny exterior. It's dull. Um, it rises twice and it um, you punch it down the way you do focaccia. So like you were playing piano on it, you just punch it down and then you punch it down again and add the onion and then it goes in the oven. In fact, Bialis and Montreal bagels are two of the recipes that you can make without an overnight rise. So if you're impatient, those are where you should start. All right. And then I have, then I have an, a next question, hopefully. Uh, uh, Montreal, ba New York City bagels, are they poached or not poached? All bagels are boiled before they're baked. Okay. That's so a boiled. classic part of a, a bagel. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. And then... But my Bialis wouldn't be, or Montreal bagels would not be, right? Okay. No, Montreal bagels are boiled ahead, and they're okay. always boiled in a honey-scented water. It's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> it probably came because someone spilled honey in the water. Who knows? You know what I mean? Who but, knows? <laughs> <laughs> that's so nice. That's so nice. Why do you, how do you think that that came about? Like, I've always thought that was a little, I mean, I understand that there are different cooking techniques, obviously. But but I've always thought it was um, interesting. Do you have any like uh, any sort of anthropological or cultural insight on why the bagel is boiled before it's baked? Well, there's a lot of um, discussion about yeah. the history of the bagel, and many people feel that it, a bagel is um, a, a, a close cousin to the Turkish simit, S I M I T which uh -huh. goes back to the 12th or 13th century. Right. In the six, 1600s in Poland, bagels first started appearing, and that was shortly after the Ottoman Empire made a tear through that part of Europe. So, mm -hmm. um, but uh, why are bagels boiled first? You know, I think it's just that different cultures had different ways of getting bread ready to go uh -huh. into the oven. Yeah. And that's the way... Um, bagels were prepared. Well, and I guess in a way too, it probably arrests the cooking at some, you know what I mean? Like there's probably a, there, I'm sure there's a practical that, reason for it. I think that might be right because they are prone to over proofing mm -hmm. bagels because there's sugar and the sweetener and a lot of yeast and like, and a super just, strong uh, like gluten web, right? Exactly. You know, they can just rise, rise, rise up, you know? So yeah. So so I've, so learned that it's like eight to 14 hours is the window for rising in the refrigerator. Fewer, okay. less than that, and it won't be ready. More than 14 hours, and it's totally overproofed, and they're like giant balloons. Oh, wow. Everyone, I'm like, I've got to keep an eye on the time because I'm so, so fascinating <laughs> when I'm talking to you. What was the one of the most surprising things that you learned while, while, uh, making this book and y'all are just going to hold up this awesome cover once again. Okay. The most surprising thing I learned is that I can make bagels for two and a half years, twice a week and not get tired of them. <laughs> I love the fact that you have, that's wonderful, you know, but that's love, right? Like, you know, yeah. that's just love. Um, I love the fact that your recipe for the New York bagel makes six. Yeah, I think the yield was something I really, really mm -hmm. worked toward because I, I live in a household of two. It, right. To, and, and I don't have a lot of refrigerator room. I have a big refrigerator, but I do a lot of stuff. And so to put a quarter sheet pan into the refrigerator overnight was mm -hmm. easy. Finding the room for a full sheet pan was a lot harder. And I didn't want right. to do two rounds of baking. I wanted right. to do one round of baking. So no. six... It took me a while. Most recipes make nine or eight or 12. I mean, some weird number. I wanted six. Got there. No, thank you for that. And I'm, I'm a huge fan of what, uh, uh, you know, I've, I call small bakes, you know, because yeah. you like you wind up with these recipes and it like makes 12, makes 24, makes 48. And even yeah. if it's a family of four, it's just to start with, it's a lot of ingredients. It's a lot of work. And then you have a lot yeah. of product that you yeah. either have to consume to prevent food waste or freeze. And not everybody has a big freezer. You know what I mean? It like Correct. winds up. So thank you for that. I love that. And it's also less intimidating, right? I think that's six. right. Mm -hmm. I can make yeah. six. I can make six of anything, you know? That's right. <laughs> 
do okay we have a question um do the schmears freeze they do not there you go boom yeah cream cheese <laughs> would get wet and watery it separates it just doesn't stay you know i also am really pleased with the chance to write all these fun family stories throughout this book that for me yes. was really joyful and i, I can't wait to share them oh, that, isn't love... that picture funny <laughs> I love this, you know, and I think that that's one of the reasons, let's just face it, y'all, uh, Kathy and I are guilty of doing it. Uh, there's 10 million bajillion recipes on the internet. Now, of course, you don't know how good they are, right? You don't know what you can right. trust or not. But I think that that's one of the beauty of a cookbook is that you're telling us in this gorgeous book, you're telling us all about how to cook, all about how to make bagels, all about the how to substitute ingredients. We're also getting a little bit of insight into your life. And, and at the end of the day, yeah. that's what this is all really about, right? Absolutely. It was really a joy to be able to write about it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm so, yeah, that's so, that's so wonderful. That's so wonderful. Well, Kathy, I am so glad that you were a guest on the show today. I want to thank everybody so much for watching. And um, thank you, Virginia. If they, yes. And if people want to, so your book is available everywhere. Um, and all those online places. But if they want to um, order perhaps a signed copy, do you have a partnership with a local bookstore? I don't have a partnership, but I know that my friend Allie Kirkpatrick at Old Town Books in Alexandria, Virginia will have stock signed and available. That is wonderful. Let me see if I can put that up. And for more information, y'all, you can visit um, kathybarrow.com. So thank you so much, Kathy. Congratulations Thanks, on your great book. Appreciate it so much. Thanks. Let's see. Yes. Hey, okay. Oh my gosh. I could just continue on and on and on. So y'all, if you want to win a copy of this book, please go to my Instagram feed and look for the cover of it. Um, we're going to, I'm going to post this, uh, post the video on Instagram later. Um, it was really great for Kathy to be on the show today. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, for more tips, techniques, and recipes, you can go to virginiawells.com. Thanks so much for watching. Um, I am off next Friday. I'm really excited. I'm going up to Hambage um, to, to check out some stuff. So I'll see you in a couple of weeks. We've got some great guests coming up. Um, bon appetit, y'all. Okay. Bye-bye now.